Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. The safest way of that relationship is through this email system and that anytime somebody's asking a question they have to know and this for analogy is like a doctor's office that when you go into the doctor's office there should be an assistant in that room. That if you're dealing with the opposite person, the opposite gender there has to be a third for any time two people are involved shaitan is the third. And this is the way of Sayyidina Muhammad gives us always the best of character and the best of examples to safeguard. Anyone whom is emailing shouldn't think that they're emailing us privately, that's not of any interest to us and that was the establishment of the email is that there's no private communication, that you should word your communications in a way that you know there's an audience. There could be two, three, ten people listening to the question and the shaykh giving the reply like a medical office. If it's of a two-personal nature then you shouldn't be sending it to a shaykh. Has to be an adab and an understanding so that not to cross. Now people who studied psychology and they deal with human nature of people, they understand that the, the biggest class is the ethics class, most difficult one to pass. They have rules on what you can and what you cannot do, the ethics. And you, if you do it wrong they take your license. Unfortunately in spirituality there's no one to take a license and many people will be harmed. But what you do is that you get a strike against you from Allah That the crossing of the line is, is like a, a thin hair. You find yourself in a very difficult situation in an instant. So then to operate within the light on the street, on the main street is important. So that to direct people come to this email, ask your questions at this email. At this email there are several staff members all receiving it, it comes into all of their inboxes. That way every dialogue, every question, every answer <coughs> is reviewed and given and this is to establish and avoid private chatting. So this is the main street, this is where the guidance is coming. If you choose to go off the street and into a dark alley and begin to chat individually with somebody then you have to know that you're off the street and you're operating in an alley where two different genders are texting each other and the danger like psychology. In, in a world in which many women feel that nobody can relate to them, people don't understand your spiritual experiences. Men too but the men are not being abused by women shaykhs. So the likelihood of a man being abused by a man shaykh is different but they can be financially abused, taken advantage of. But this difficulty is when somebody feels that nobody understands them, nobody perceives what they perceive, they're seeing things, feeling things and the rest of the world thinks they're crazy and then they come across spiritual people that, oh I understand what you understand. And I have an interest in what you're experiencing, this is interesting to me, right there is a danger. Because the person now felt a familiarity with you that's no longer professional. And that can lead into inappropriate conduct and then distancing from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and all the numerous difficulties that come with that. So then to safeguard in these days of difficulty is to create this email system where multiple people are online and to stop the side rooms. Even if they thought it was appropriate, their conduct was good, you're walking a line like a razor blade. That if one time the person feels familiar with you, feels that you understand them and start to say, oh my I feel something for you. 
You have no one to blame but yourself that you put yourself in such a situation and now you can't get out of it. So again as a reminder for the hikmah and the wisdom of an emailing system that comes to a staff account. So anyone who's online dealing with questions, dealing with concerns is immediately, yeah shaykh set up a communication so email him. And then you free yourself of any potential difficulty, any potential error because now is not a time in which to get a bullseye on your head, right? Inappropriate conduct by Allah can give somebody a bullseye. You didn't want it, it became like a, like a guidance thing, you know they are when they want to target somebody with their technology, they just put a little electronic sticker on you and their device follows you everywhere <laughs> and then comes down and take you out. Allah has same, that for some reason if Allah's not happy and the, the barakah of protection goes, all it needs is not a predator drone but just this virus starts to come towards us. Difficulties come towards us, every type of azab begin to come. So then why? Why ask for that type of difficulty? So then they create a system in which to, I don't want to deal with people, send that to the email. And in the email they have an adab of even the staff member not to send directly out to the opposite gender an email response. That if there's an opposite gender I want to be a part of the conversation on what you replied. Because even unknown person could be communicating. So again to establish these barriers as a protection for ourselves in these days of difficulty and, and days of trying to gain Allah's infinite rahmah and mercy inshaAllah. With that disclaimer then inshaAllah if there's any questions for tonight that we can go over. Many people had questions about their energy, their protection, their connection and there's a hikmah on why Allah has isolated everyone. That the real pandemic is the human. He is the most toxic or she is the most, insan is the most toxic creation on earth. Not the animals but this insan. The more they gather and the more they collect, the sickness they spread. Not only the virus but the backbiting, the bad character, all of what's coming from their mouth and their hearts, Allah gives us all a time, isolate. Means do your khalwa. This khalwa time will count against your khalwa days in the grave. You don't need to seek the company of people, you need to seek the company of yourself, find out who you are. Find out your character defects, fight through your demons with your energy, with your meditation, with learning your madad, with playing your salawats until you reach a point in which you really rely on it and it's not a pastime and entertainment. Because once you start to practice, once you start to feel, once you become more sensitive you see this pandemic is not about bacteria. This is about devils are all over the air, they have come into the atmosphere and they're everywhere. Then you take your practices serious, your breathing exercise serious, your cleanliness serious. For if you should put a little bit of alcohol you find your hands are burning, it took away your wudu. So means they're not people of philosophy, they're the people of certainty, they taste, they taste the pain and they taste the pleasure. How can someone only say they taste the pleasure but they didn't taste the pain? You haven't been burned by these shaitans? There are creatures in, in Allah's creation if they're able to approach you, they come they can twist your bones and crack your body. You think it's something far off, it just hasn't opened yet. But for Allah's servants He's trained them, He let them come and come into their leg and begin to twist it like they're breaking their bones until they can recite and make their connection for Allah's support to come and to lift that difficulty. What you see in the movies is very real, 
they rip that insan up and uh, we have images of people who have been attacked and severely attacked. So it means their madad is real, their teaching will be real, their energy practices are real, it's not a philosophy. So then you're not in need to go to compounds and, and uh, communion places and sit on, on places and properties with collective groups of people, sit by yourself, build yourself. You don't need to be cross-contaminated. You go sit on a farm with sick people, you come back with all sorts of mental sicknesses because you took on all the sicknesses and the gossip of all the people. So what does Allah want for everyone? Stay right where you are. The fitna so bad the one sitting is better than the one standing, the one standing better than the one walking. We are in a time which Prophet is moving and saying, don't move, stay exactly where you are. Find out first who you are, build your energy, protect yourself from yourself. This is now our opportunity. It doesn't even wound these ulama that going into the wrong area. Why are you going in that area and teaching? That's not your place. So every one of these shaykhs are sitting at home, they have nowhere to go. Is a hikmah and a wisdom, all this, why are you going and cross-contaminating? The one who speaks Arabic going to the place that doesn't speak Arabic, why do they need you? Go speak with the Arabs. You try to do da'wah to an Arab when you're not an Arab, they knock you in the head. Zihara fala, hayra fala, oh shaykh you're calling all the farmers, what do you say? They didn't like, so it means to each their own. Allah will raise up a people that will deal with everyone. So this is a great training taking place. The Allah is giving time for everybody, sit right where you are and rethink your life, what was your purpose? You have something to teach, you better teach it online. You have something to learn, you better find yourself. If you think death is coming then you better know yourself quick. And if you found yourself, oh, alhamdulillah you're happy with death anyways. Nobody escapes death. Now if it's coming a little bit quicker and Allah wants everybody to be scared and there's like this something coming that like has a circle with all these like fingers on it, Okay, do your your muraqaba, find yourself, find your bad characteristics and clean them. Ya Rabbi make me to be clean, make me to be pure, let me to have this time of my life to build my love for Sayyidina Muhammad So when this death comes, I want to be raised at the feet of Sayyidina Muhammad So alhamdulillah that Allah giving us this time and didn't give us sudden death. With one azab wipe out an entire city and nobody even had a, a moment to do and change anything. So what are we doing with the time that Allah has given? Don't look for other people just to take on their sicknesses and their craziness. Try to find a life in which you're in your room with your loved ones, your family, your children. If you have none then find yourself. Once you found yourself and found your character, found all your defects, Begin now to ask the shaykh how to clean them, how to clean them. And that's the purpose of these trainings and these realities inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surah al-Fatiha. What you got? As Salaamu Sayyidi, is there any special dua we can recite in large gatherings to protect ourselves from the COVID virus? I think we already answered that, stay home. <laughs> All the energy teachings is, is based on that, right? So when we train with energy people their lives were based on their understanding of energy. There are areas in Southeast Asia where they go to fight with energy beings. And there was an area in which they said if we pass through here this is a very dangerous area because there are some people who are trained, they throw razor blades at you. And so, what are you talking about? They throw razor blades. He says, You walk through this area, they have a certain skill, and they throw a razor blade at you. You don't see them even throwing, but something will come and begin to move through your body 
and cut you. So their training was real. When they're trained by their shaykhs for these types of people's training, they, they rely on their energy, they rely on their practices, they rely on everything that Sayyidina Muhammad gave them, right? The sunnah was a complete shield for battle. They, they keep every, everything that Prophet gave to them as a shield of energy. Only that shield of energy would stop them from that thing being able to attack them because it's satanic. And the real awzu when they believe it and they live by it and they are the dress of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, of course Allah then shields them from those. So it means their, their practices are real. So then this type of training in this part of the world is the same. That do your energy practices, do your breathing practices, keep the station of wudu always upon yourself. Your wudu and your salat and wudu and keeping all of the teachings and the muraqabah and the meditation is a shield for the believer. With that shield everywhere they go they have a protection. If where you step you cannot say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem you're in danger because you're leaving the Auzu Billah and you're entering into an area with shaitan and why Allah going to protect in that region? So means then everything is a understanding. If I'm living a life of A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem and I'm in a place that's inappropriate then Allah's going to ask, why are you then there? You left your shield of protection and the places that you're protected, you broke the A'udhu and you entered into a satanic location. So then are you surprised that satan would attack you there? No. So every day these kids and teenagers they're making a choice but the wrong choice. You know give us a du'a to go here do this, do this, what are you talking about? This is not a joke. You're entering into these satanic environments and then hoping that Allah's protection inshaAllah His rahmah be upon you because the choices you're making you're, you're going into an area where it's, it's raining fire, you just don't see it. Keep yourself under this umbrella of rahmah when the earth is being rained by fire and difficulties and calamities. So we choose where we're going to go. You're going to go for zikrullah, alhamdulillah keep your wudu, keep your practices, come to mention Allah's name, don't gossip, don't backbite, don't do anything to drop your shield of protection and go home. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> Sayyidi, the struggle to be consistent in prayers, how can someone fight this struggle and win over it? Again all of this is based on energy. If we don't understand the energy, if we don't understand the chicken or the egg, which came first? Do you think is your… the salah is protecting you? And you can do anything you want? No. But what protects you is understanding through your guidance. The shaykhs the first thing they teach you is make your wudu. With your wudu, your salatul wudu, then begin your breathing and your energy. Have the good character. All of these again the energy subject keeps coming back, why? So that you have a shield. Your shield against bad actions, their teaching and tarbiyah against bad character. What happens? You have a positive energy, you have a, a, a rahmah that dressing you. That rahmah that dresses you inspires you to goodness and shields you from sayyat. What do they say in Juma? Most of these people, sayyata amalina. Is their destruction is what? The sayyat of their amal. The sins of their action or their destruction. So the sins that bring you down and destroy you and take your shield away, what's happening? They don't like to talk about energy. The thing is they're like, oh goofy guys, why do they talk about energy? Because it's the, it's the main reality behind everything. If your sayyat and sins bring your shield down. When the shield come down the ifrit enter into you. 
when you're loaded with ifrit are you surprised you don't pray or did you think they were going to help you pray? Oh shaykh I got a lot of ifrit and they're inspiring me to go and pray. If you become so overloaded by them they won't let you make a sujood. And you probably know a lot of friends who can't. They go they'll get burned if they try to put their head to the ground. Why? They've given themselves like a bus to shayateen. So very simple, the character and the actions that you do, are you building a shield of protection? If you are not building the protection then you're not the solution but you're part of the problem. If you're a part of the problem then know that these devils are coming in, they're overtaking you, every bad choice you'll make, every bad action you'll make until they obliterate your home, your being, your, your, your heart. That's all that nafs wants is to come in and open the door for shaitan because the two of them are shariq. They're not shariq with Allah There's no way to be shariq with Allah When Allah is saying, don't make shirk means don't let your nafs to partner with shaitan to become one, the two of them will kill you. Your life was to beat your nafs down and hold the door against shaitan locked up, inshaAllah. <clears throat> Sayyidi how can one identify if a person is a waliullah or not or how can we identify if a person is Darwish, Abdal, Ghos, Majzub. Majzub, Darwish. I don't know, you can identify somebody who likes baghlava. <laughs> That's all you have to worry about, inshaAllah. Just look for somebody who likes baghlava. <laughs> this is not the, is, is of no concern who's a, a wali, who's not a wali, who's a Darwish. But these terms are not understood anymore but what they want from us is, why don't you find out who you are? Most people see the world through their eyes. So we gave talks like this 10, 11 years ago. So if I put blue glasses on now, I see everybody as blue. I see the world according to my condition. If I'm a crook, everybody's a crook. So you haven't heard a friend like that, that's a crook, oh, he's a crook, trust me I know. As soon as he says that, guilty, hang him. <laughs> trust you I know, you just gave your, your hand away. Anyone says trust me is telling you he's dangerous. And when he categorizes everyone like that it's from himself. So there's a deep reality in the way people communicate and the people they talk. So it's not about me trying to judge people and understand people, it was about me trying to find myself. And if I wanted to find myself, Ya Rabbi I just guide me, guide me, Ya Rabbi guide me to find myself. If Allah guided you to a bad shaykh that's what Allah wanted for you, a lesson, right? So he said, I accompany the person and the people asked, well this is a really corrupt person. Yes, yeah, I realized that so I did the opposite of what he told me to do for 20 years. Because Allah guided me, I did the opposite of whatever that person was doing. It means Allah will send you exactly what you deserve. If you're good and sincere Allah will guide you. Why Allah to give you food and give you rooks when you're asking for food? But in your inner being you may be asking for something that's not appropriate. Then Allah will send you to someone who will clean you because he's not appropriate either. See, <laughs> People come and ask, they say, I want a spouse. I say, yeah, what do you want from the spouse? Nothing of what Prophet described, I want the money, I want this and this and this. Oh, so you're looking for somebody to rip off because you want all their things. You didn't come and say, I want somebody pious, I want somebody noble, I want somebody honorable. I said, oh, somebody makes money, somebody gonna give me a car, somebody gonna give me a house. So you want somebody to steal from. Allah going to send you a shark who he's coming to me and asking also, I want somebody to rip off, I want somebody to… Allah makes two sharks come together. Allah doesn't send you His noble and beautific creation for you to pillage them. So everything is based on intention. 
in every aspect of our life if my intention is correct, my understanding is correct, I will get what I'm asking for. So then they come to teach, make the correct intention. Prophet asked to marry based on piety, not based on wealth, not based on provision for Allah will provide. But now everybody wants money. So what do you get? You get a hustler because they want money, you got money, everybody now is attacking each other. And that's the condition of insan. And Allah doesn't change a condition of a people until they change what's within themselves. Now hundred emails a day come in with every type of condition that's wrong. This wrong, this wrong. My house wrong, my family wrong. I, I'm not married yet, I want to get married. I'm married, I don't want to be married. <laughs> Everyone who's not married wants to be married. Everyone who's married doesn't want to be married. Why is that? Because Allah Jalla is telling you, I'm not going to change the condition of your life until you change what's within yourself. You don't change the condition to get something different. I'll get this new life and everything will change. It's still you. You packed yourself in there. You were the problem. If you change yourself, Allah begins to change the condition of everything around you. Is, is Holy Qur'an is Allah's promise. If I don't change myself every condition will keep coming back. If Allah want to teach me something about myself, Allah said, when you don't listen I'm going to send it much more severe. And it seems to be magnifying, you know what do they call in math? It goes from times 2, times 4, times 16. Exponential. Yeah, it's not going slowly. If you didn't get it the first time, it was times two. If you didn't get it a second time, it became times four. If you didn't get the third time, it's times sixteen means you're, you, you, you've been knocked all over the place. Because when Allah loves you, His rahmah and His love, He wants a change. Why is He not getting it? So then everything in our life is to bring about that change. Everything is meant to be scrubbing and cleansing me for me to make my tafakkur, my understanding, my characteristics, inshaAllah. <clears throat> Sayyidi, how can one differentiate the feel of fear from the heart sensor warning against a particular action? How can one feel it? Yes, the, when we're building our practices and build the sensitivity to the heart with the zikr, with the salawats, the heart is like a radar. And as you're training yourself that your sensitivity to the heart, you're making your zikr in your heart, you're making your meditation and your tafakkur into the heart. Then when you enter into a place you feel your heart is palpitating, your initial in interpretation is that something is wrong, step out until your sensor becomes more powerful and stronger and then it can begin to guide you that something in the room is dangerous. Right now your initial phase is just where you stepped is not right for you, step out. Listen to your heart if it's the heart that you want to develop. So then you be trained by the shaykh on how to understand that signal, pay attention to the signal, don't kill the signal. Don't keep suffocating it so that you don't want to learn from your heart. Those whom nourish that reality is the whole tariq, that they nourish the reality that my heart is sensing something wrong, I back up. When I'm talking with somebody I'm feeling the, the movement and my heart is beating fast. It wasn't me, it meant nothing to change in my heart. Why is this person's heart beating fast? Maybe they're nervous in your presence, your heart begins to send you many signals. Then you begin to understand the realities of the shaykhs. When they talk their heart is a connected device. Based on the connection of their heart they pick up the vibrations of all those whom are in the room present and watching. And as a result their speech is answering the vibration coming from the heart. Their answer is to your heart, not to your head, 
Because Sayyidina Shaykh gave an answer that was something, I, I asked something different, he gave an answer that's different. Because the answer wasn't to give to your head, but from your heart a signal came, your real question came into the heart and the real answer of what you needed to hear was given to you, not what you wanted to hear, inshaAllah. <coughs> Sayyidi, um, I know that we ask protection from awliya or shaykhs but then can you explain how it didn't contradict with iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'een? I was watching Shaykh's video about Surah Fatiha. Yeah. Talked at lunch today. Everything that we do, Awzun Shaitan Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, everything that we do is for Allah's ridha and satisfaction. That Every action is to make Allah happy, every action is if Allah is happy and how Allah happy, tahzim al Nabi So when we all come into our life, make Allah happy. So the first order, make Allah happy, not make me happy or make my shaykh happy, is make Allah happy. Student then comes to learn what makes Allah happy, tahzim al Nabi is to raise the magnificent status in everything you do of Sayyidina Muhammad Means glorify that reality, praise that reality that Ya Rabbi what you gave us of the blessings of Sayyidina Muhammad live a life of, of spreading that reality. That gains Allah's happiness upon the servant. I'm happy with you because this is what I want. Your life is to spread that reality, spread the teaching of that reality, hold your mawlids, hold the character, teach people about the beautific character of Sayyidina Muhammad and be an example of that character. So then their life was to make Allah happy. If Allah is happy with you, yansurukullahu nasra naziza. Allah says, you just have to worry about me being happy with you. There's no wali who can help you if I'm angry with you. So when Allah said, they took their walis as protectors means a fake crook came to them and said, I'll deal with the problems you have with Allah and you listen to me. Give me all your wealth and I'll take away all your problems. No, no, Allah is saying, no, no, if I'm angry with you, I will obliterate everything about you and if I love you, I'll destroy all your enemies. So then tariqah comes and doesn't say, we're going to take any problems away, we're, we're going to resolve this in front of Allah Their only role was not to take your path but to show you the path. Anyone who steps in front and says, I'll be your path, you don't have to do anything, he's lying. And that you can do every type of corrupt action? No. The tariqah and naqshbandiyatul aliyya from Shaykh Nazim was always teaching, seek Allah's love and satisfaction. Then the next natural question is, why and how is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Then are you becoming Muhammadiyoon, are you celebrating, are you doing the mawlid, are you spreading the knowledges, are you doing everything that you can to propagate that reality? And do you only teach about that love and that muhabbat? Then know Allah is happy with you and Allah says, if I'm your wali, I'm the protector of my wali. Allah's the defense, Allah's the protection, Allah's the one whom will give everything and that's what the tariqah should be teaching. So there's a, a reality within that reality. And that's a very fine line of the adab and the understandings of the turuqs. And that's when a lot of difficulties can come, when people are not really clear on that understanding. But everything is for the satisfaction of Allah and that's why all their teaching should be about the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Why? To gain the love of Allah and not teaching about themselves and shaykhs and shaykhs can walk through walls and shaykhs can do this and you talk so much about the shaykh you forgot to talk about Sayyidina Muhammad Then you have a big problem because you set yourself up as a partner with the beloved Rasul What was the importance of that? 
No, but talk about the love of Prophet That's why if you're truly from that love, you busy yourself and think everything from that garden is like a garden of love. Then they wouldn't have to be fighting and making fitna with each other. But Allah you know, knows best what's happening in this world today. So we pray that Allah keep us on His love and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and every worshipness is for Allah alone. The worshipness is always for Allah Ta'zim and Nabi you have to start all the way from the beginning on, on, on all of these teachings. It's a very delicate like above your understanding of PhD courses, these are not beginning courses that when Allah brought this Muhammadan light, he told the angels to make sujood, right? Who got angry? Shaitan. Because shaitan thought he's the khalifa. So why are they making sujood to him? Why would he get angry? Because he wanted the sujood. And why Allah asked for sujood when if you think only sujood is for worshipness? This was sujood al ihtiram. This was a prostration of respect because the angels witnessed Nurul Muhammadi of which they understood that light was only in the Divinely Presence. How that light went from Divinely Presence and now entering into the realm of their understanding through the creation of the form of Sayyidina Adam Because of that Allah make your sujood. And all the angels made their sujood except the jinn. And he said, no. Then the angels looked back and they were so scared that he's not making sujood, they went back again. And that's why we have two times in each rakah a sujood. Means these are deep realities. Then again, coming in this month, the 12th surah is Surat al Yusuf. Read Surat Al Yusuf because it has to do with Rabbaniyun that the Arbab and the lordly souls, Alif, Lam, Ra, has to do with the secret of Rububiyyah and Lordship. And how Allah makes reference to this word of Lord, where Allah makes reference to the word Lord when He takes and talks to Sayyidina Yusuf that. Tell your Lord means your King and all the secrets of Lordship that are in this surah for us to understand. And then when Sayyidina Yusuf finally reached his maqam, what happened with his father who was a prophet, Sayyidina Yaqub He made sujood to a prophet of Allah A prophet of Allah who has the perfect knowledge of their Divine laws he went into sujood because of what was given to his son as a maqam and a station. And his sujood was not of worshipness that I take you as my Lord and Saviour, but as a respect of what Allah has established in His Divinely Kingdom and how He bestowed it upon this servant out of ihtiram, he made a sujood that to glorify Allah but to to thank Allah's creation is to thank Allah Zawajal. Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.